So we're out here in San Francisco at the Bay Area at a conference called Social Capital Markets, also known as SoCap 11. And today, it's really a privilege to be sitting here with David Murphy, CEO of Better World Books, an organization that is really held as, as one of the, I mean, truly epitomes of, of those models at the intersection of money and meeting. Um, and David, I'd like to start just with a brief explanation of, of what Better World Books is and, and what you guys are pushing towards and achieving. Sure. Well, we like to think of ourselves as the, the online bookstore with a soul. Um, mm. We are an online bookseller. Uh, we're now one of the top five um, se online sellers of, of used books in the world. But we have a very unique business model. We started about eight years ago with the idea that uh, there's a lot of books out there that end up in the trash, unfortunately, end up in landfills, aren't put to the use. And um, we believe that you could, if you could get your hands on books, that there was an emerging opportunity to sell those online. So, and then eventually we've kind of broadened it even into the community. So it's all about how do we acquire used books that people are willing to donate to us because they believe in the mission, they believe that every single one of those books will either be sold to fund literacy, will be donated in and of itself, yeah. or will be responsibly you know, recycled and kept out of landfills. So that's the brand promise. Um, let's face it, if you're gonna buy a book and you're gonna spend some disposable income, yeah. why not do it in a way that's gonna change the world for yeah. the better? Yeah. So yeah. that's no essentially the, where we are today. Yeah, so. what, what is, um, what's the key to the success in terms of scale? I mean, once you have a proven model and it's working, how did you leverage that and, and get to where you are today? Well, I think we paid attention to some of the real core basics at the beginning. Um, if the mission really is to change the world through literacy and education and be serious about it, that's, you, know, you have to scale. It's an enormous uh, social challenge. We need, you know, we need some leadership. We need, we need access to capital. And so that led to me jumping in, sort of moving from mentor role to let's come in and be CEO and take, and take this thing and run with it. Yeah. So mentorship can be critical. Oh, in terms very of critical. I, I say that a lot. You know, some people think it's come up with a brilliant idea, you know, get in a bunch of, 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 a bunch of uh, VCs or angel investors mm -hmm. or whoever to, to bring some money. And that's part of it. Yeah. But, you know, oftentimes it's, it's the counsel, the advice, the connections. Um, it's what you bring to the table, which is, it's, again, one, one part is a check, but one part is, you know, what about all those relationships? What about your Rolodex? What about people you can introduce us to? And, and, and that's, that's huge. Um, from your perspective, what, what are the differences and what are the hurdles that you've experienced and overcome throughout the growth of the company? Well, I think, you know, it's, it's always a balancing act in terms of, uh, on the one hand, growth is great because you're started, you know, you're getting more and more people to buy in what you're doing, but it's creating stress points in the system. And I think in our case, a lot of it was as a social enterprise, uh, some of our early challenges, and, and I think in some cases this is still true today, although much less so, which is having to explain what the heck a social enterprise is, That's especially right. a for-profit one. Yep. Um, so it, it's getting a lot of outside validation uh, and, and sort of independent thinking around this model that, that's, that's helped. But in the early days, I mean, that, that was a struggle because people would just want to compare you to a nonprofit and yeah. you'd say, no, we're not a nonprofit. And um, it, took a it took a little bit. So with, with the social enterprise space, um, we've seen such a progression over time. Um, but where, where do you hope it is five years from now? What do you hope people are talking about at SOCAP? in these types of convenings and how are they looking at social enterprise? Well, a couple things for me, scale. Um, that shouldn't be unique or somehow have to be explained differently for social enterprise. And we just don't have enough of that right now. And I would hope five years from now that there's thousands of, right. of you know, social enterprises that have truly scaled. And I think to do that, you know, again, it gets back to are you paying attention to the basics and how you really build and scale a business, right? So we have to be um, all about the experience and the and that's the value proposition and, and the service we're delivering to our customer. And that, of course, is common in any business. So for all these companies in social enterprise to scale, yeah. I hope they get that. And I hope that they view the fact that they may be passionate around their mission, but do they have the people around them? Do they have the access to capital they're going to need um, to scale? So that five yeah. years from now, we've hopefully said, Yes, the, 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 the social enterprise space is acting very much like a, a capital market should Absolutely. in terms of money in and money out. And that money out piece is going to take some success stories that mm -hmm. really, again, aren't, there's a few out there today, but there needs to be many, many more. Oh, well, thank you so yeah, much, David. You're welcome. Really Thanks. a pleasure. All right. Yeah, Thanks great. so much. You're welcome. Thanks, guys.